six is 21st century slavery in America. 21st century slavery in America. Let me drop the link. We're going to YouTube. We're going to play eight now minutes. Why do you say a slave? Because some people think that, hey, once you're there, you can get a bunk bed, you get a book, and you get to just sit there and, and born silence for the rest okay. of the days. You ask me why I said slavery? Let's go. Have you ever seen the pig cotton? Uh, nah. Where have you seen the pig cotton at? Never in my life. A slave, though. Oh, slave. slave. I was sent to pick cotton. That's why I said. Oh, I was so you? Slave. So wait, wait. So I was sent to sit. I was. Wait, wait. All right, I so, ain't never seen nothing but a slave pick cotton. Wait, wait. So yeah. you have actually picked cotton off the cotton plant. I have picked cotton off the cotton plant. Texas Department of Criminal Justice. You picked cotton off the cotton plant. Real life. It ain't real life. Real life street stars know what time it is. We're going to touch on Ferguson. This was the first spot you went to, Ferguson. No, first spot I went to, Blue Hand Spoken His Story was burning. Clemens Burn. Unit in Brazoria. I did not know slavery exists until I went to prison. See, I can speak about slavery, right? Because I've been a slave. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery unless you've been convicted of a crime. Mm. Do, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? I catch you. I'm inventory at the age of 17, a slave for the state of Texas to, to serve eight years of servitude in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Now, why you say a slave? Because some people think that, hey, once you're there, you just get a bunk bed, you get a book, and you get to just sit there and, and bore in silence for the rest okay. of the days. You ask me why I said slavery? Let's go. Have you ever seen the pig cotton? Uh, nah. Where have you seen the pig cotton at? Never in my life. A slave, though. Oh, slave. slave. Yeah. I was sent to pick cotton. That's why I said. Oh, I'm so a you? Slave. So wait, wait. So I was sent to sit. I was. Wait, wait. All right, I so, ain't never seen nothing but a slave pick cotton. Wait, wait. So yeah. you have actually picked cotton off the cotton plant. I have picked cotton off the cotton plant. Texas Department of Criminal Justice. You picked cotton off the cotton plant. I remember in movies you would watch. <laughs> they would. They, yeah. would, they would. They would. They would whoop a slave for not getting, let's say, fifty pounds of this soft ass cotton. Right. So like, just give me, just walk me through a cotton picking day. No, I give you this day. So I'm big, bad ass crib night, 17 years old. You put anybody in front of me, I'm, I'm, I got a high percentage of running them over. Right. Am mm -hmm. a, a, amongst my peers, I'm that nigga. Yeah. Right. Okay. I hit Brass area, Clemens Union, right. Burning hell. Yeah. AKA burning hells. Hit, yeah. That's the name of the unit. <laughs> Shit. The name of the unit is burning hell. So we get there, right? First day they want to roll you out to the field. Well, the day after you arrive, I go through fighting and all that. The next day, we go to field work. Work call. They call them whole squads. H-O, because you got to cut grass with an Aggie. This is what I'm telling you. Yeah. You cut grass in line with an Aggie, right? Whole fields of grass are cut. We are human lawnmowers. Okay, that's that's it. That's when it's not cotton time. But I get there at cotton time. Now I'm like you. You saying damn? I'm like, what the fuck is cotton time? If, if, if yeah. anybody if anybody tell you right now it's cotton time, you like, I don't know what the fuck they talking about. I go out here to the fields, and this is something me and you would never think exists. Right around the corner here, it's plantations of nothing but cotton. The South Empire was built on cotton. And they hadn't changed it in the night. We was here to pick it. And look, when I got to the, see, I'm like, I'm not picking that shit, nigga. I'm not no motherfucking slave. Y'all got, they drew their guns. You ask what happened. Yeah. You say what happened, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, they, they trained for niggas. Oh, you one of them niggas. You think you ain't gonna pick, huh? What they called, Kunta? What was the nigga name? Yeah, Kunta Kinte. Yeah, Toby. Toby, yeah, yeah. That's what they called him, Toby. Yeah, yeah. oh, Toby, you think you Kunta. Yeah. You think you Kunta, Toby. Roll right up me on them guns, told me get down on my hands and knees or they gonna shoot me. That's what I'm telling you. They got, uh, you are a slave. They have the right to kill you if you pose a threat to leaving this structure. Yeah. Not, not, ain't, no, no, damn, this is jail. So I am a slave. If I run, they shoot me in the back. How many that, times you thought of running? None. Oh, 
What, what you mean? You don't want to get shot in the back? You know how many niggas stayed on that plantation? Y'all, do you hear what I'm saying? Well, what, what you mean? So let me, at, at any point, did you feel like, man, if we all get in this together, we could overtake this shit? That shit sound good, right. bro. That shit sound good. And I'm going to get to that, right? So to this point here, right, they made me get on the ground. One of them got off the horse. When he got off the horse, if I made any moves, any moves, you get smoked. They get a free kill. Free this, kill. This is what I'm saying. This is no investigation. No, what the first 48? No, for real. Yeah, like what happened? This is a free kill. They got mm. they got notches on their shit from niggas they didn't kill. Yeah. They yeah. keeping the score. Do, do you hear yeah. what I'm saying? That, that's why I say that, let's not play with this shit. This is slavery. This is my first day. I'm like you. What the fuck is this? You still a child? Hey, yeah, you still this a kid too. You uh, what? 17, 18? I'm 17. 17. Like what the fuck is this? Make me get on my knees. One of them get off, handcuff me, right? And I'm thinking this. Well. At least I get a ride back in the building. I'm out this shit. They got me fucked up. No, that's not happening, bro. Guess what they do? You no, know, they had. Do they whip you? They don't whip you, right? That's what they do. Yeah. It's hot outside right now, right? Yeah. They have a trailer. Everybody know of a trailer. Like they go on the track back of a truck. Yeah. They have a trailer that's enclosed with a fence, uh-huh. a regular fence. Mm-hmm. They handcuff you in this trailer. Put you in this trailer like this. No seats in the trailer or nothing for the rest of the day. Welcome to burning hell. Dude, I'm telling you, I've been a slave, bro. And that shit ain't nothing to play with. I can tell you this, though. By day six, I was the most best cotton picking nigga they ever had down in that motherfucker. Look here, look here say, say, look here. And I wasn't the only one. It was some stiff cotton picking niggas down there. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hey, nigga, I'm telling you the honest truth, meaning they have perfected on mentally and physically breaking niggas. And listen, if you got two out of line, I'm finna get to your story too. Listen, that's them breaking. After that, if you get two out of line, them niggas will whoop you out there. Hey, you fucking it up for everybody. Nigga, if boss man say this nigga ain't acting right, them niggas will whoop you out there. So I went from that to having fights out there. And guess what? Fight, win, lose, or draw. Back to picking cotton. <laughs> Back to picking cotton. Lose, lose, situation. Lose, lose situation. You said you said they had notches on their belt for how many people they killed, right? Correct. What's the most you've seen a notch like to the Man, most? listen, that shit is so depressing, bro. I'm not even trying to look at the notch. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is this is this is this is a psychological play. To say, nigga, you next. So I'm not counting how many niggas already been in line. Do uh, you understand what I'm saying? These are white men. These that, are, these uh, are uh, correction white officers. Crackers. Just... What you mean? These are slave plantation people who wasn't shit in Brazoria. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The county they in, yeah. And they got to run a nigga ass off, and they get to kill a nigga if a nigga get out of line with them. Was there one? Yeah, I was told to just play eight minutes. That's a very interesting video. If you guys, let me see if I could uh, scroll it up. It's called uh, Kryptonite says he was forced to pick cotton or die. Exposes prison, modern day slavery. You guys could look. Uh, As a matter of fact, I could copy it for you guys and put it in the chat if you want to see the rest of it. Uh, Yeah, that's a very interesting video it's, and it's interesting you know how are you going to overturn that power that they have to do this kind of thing let me start with real black gentleman rbg what say you to what you just saw oh okay um so the, yeah uh i uh whew. I would say, for starters, Texas is always going to be a, 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 a sketchy territory for a lot of reasons, because you know what I'm saying it's not black man's land. Uh, the Mexicans want it, and then white folks want it. So it's like black folks in Texas. For me, look, I, I mean, that's that's that to me, just in my gut, I'm, that's like, whoo, I I can I can live without Texas for starters. But like, 
Yeah, picking cotton. See, they don't need that cotton like that. That's just that's just a ritual humiliation. You know what I'm saying? They don't need that cotton to uh to to put that on no market. And so, I mean, the ability of black people to even like, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you have these society is is, is made in such a way that if you stay within these regulations, right? The, the, you know what I'm saying? Which are always shifty, anyways, right? When you stay within these regulations, you'll be relatively comfortable. But you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, there's a run in, and whoop whoop, and then it's like all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You railroad it, and, and you thrown in, and you thrown in. Um, I mean, I'm I, I the, the, you know, going back to the um to the previous prompt, you know what I'm saying? It's like making sure that like you know um it is important that you know what I'm saying we do we don't want to we don't want to be shepherded by society. But we just want to be a step ahead so that we're not put into situations that would allow us to be caught in the first place. The best way to not get caught is to not be in arm's reach. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you can, like, just, if you know what I'm saying, you know, making sure that young people. But, again, like I said, the ground's always shifting because there's always some kind of trip trap way or just, you know what I'm saying, you know, a tail light type situation, you know what I'm saying, because, again, we don't live in utopia either. It's like, you know, there's relative, you know what I'm saying, relative comfort, right, for what it's worth, right? It's like, and so, like, I don't want to ramble too long. I mean, that story was jarring. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, you, you know, I, again, try to stay, don't get caught is, is, is always the first rule, but, you know what I'm saying, Learn and, and, and do not be a casualty. I'm going to pass the mic. Appreciate that, RBG. Let's welcome in our brother, Bakari. Bakari, how are you? Man, I'm, I'm great. What's up? What's up to everybody on the panel and the chat? Look, I, hey, I thought you was, Yeah, thank you for letting me up here, man. I know you was about to get off. I just wanted to come up here and speak and say, what's up? And I heard this story right here, man. Like, wow, this right here is a, that's foul. It's real foul. But you know what? With him explaining that, so for the people that like to judge our ancestors that was in slavery and say it's way more of y'all than them, he have more of an understanding why people didn't do nothing. Even though I have an understanding too because your fist can't beat a gun. I understand that some people did fight back. I understand that. But when I hear it, when I hear this dude tell his story, and he'll tell you he was the big bad N-word and they broke, they broke him. They put him in that hot box. That trailer, no chairs, that fence around it. In that heat, I bet you with no AC in there either. They put him in that hot box all day, all day. And and they broke him. And he talking about the notches on the belt. So they broke him in there. He wasn't going to try to run, wasn't going to try to fight. He going to do what our ancestors did. Boy, go pick that cotton. Uh, it's absolutely wrong. It's crazy. But this system and their prison system, uh, like if you look up, it was a story. I saw it on a... One guy, Chandler, was talking about it. He interviewed a guy from California. Matter of fact, it was Brandon. Uh, he interviewed a guy from California who was in prison. So let me show you what they do, right? So Mississippi wasn't having enough prison, having enough. They, they, they had too many empty beds. California prison was overflowed. So, man, you know what they did? They reached out to Mississippi and just sent prisoners to Mississippi. People from California was doing state time in Mississippi to keep you locked up in prison. Uh, so this system is crazy. And like you say, what do you do to overthrow the power? Uh, what can we do? It's something you have to think about, something you have to really work toward. But hey, shit, I don't know. Uh, like RBG said, don't be in arm's reach. Don't put yourself, try not to put yourself in that position. Or if you're going to fight and you're going to go out, go out before you get in there picking their cotton, because that's real foul. That's a way, not only did they break him in six days only, they broke him and they got you out there picking cotton off the stock like it's 1800, 1700. And that's, yeah, that, that's an embarrassing, especially when they see the big, what he said, he was the big bad in words. So if they broke him, if they broke him and people see him picking days, he say by that six day and he was the best uh, cotton picking uh, near there, right? So, if they broke him, then other people see the big bad dude get broken. So it's easy. Is then the rest becomes 
easy. And he said they have a system, but hey, of, of how to break black people. And hey, that's the system they have used ever since we have been here, man. And the thing is, what are we going to do? How are we going to get past it? How we fight the power? On that note, man, I get the mic. Thank you for that, Brother Bakari. Let me just also add and bring it kind of full circle. Uh, going back to an earlier prompt that we looked at, it was mentioned in the video that America is just one large prison colony. So the funny thing about this shit is that this is what's, you know, some form of this is what's being done to all of us, you know, black folks in this country. That's the crazy part. And, and that's also, too, side note, why I personally get tired of all of the antebellum slave movies. You know why? Because you keep showing slavery as that antebellum chattel slavery, but we're still in slavery. And when you keep showing the old way of doing it, you don't wake up the people to the idea like, yo, there's a way that there's a 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. There's a different way that they carry out that slavery today. And I would like, if we're going to make some films, right, let's make the films that show the updated version of slavery now. Maybe we could wake up a couple of more people. This thing here that this guy's talking about, they should make a film out of this guy, out of this story. here. You know, and I'm sure they have in some form or fashion here and there, but they, this is really what we supposed to be if you're going to talk about that enslavement thing, talk about what's happening now, in my opinion. Uh, Afro Native World in the chat says, and Brother Bakari, the Maroons taught us how to get free. Yeah, the Maroons also taught them. And we forget about that part. The Maroons also taught them something. You know? And we we have to come up with with uh, you know, ideas for now. We have to think outside of the box. Whatever it is we got to do, we really need to get serious about doing it. You know, uh, Trigger Happy 262 Plus says we need more media about revolt against this too. Also, this just proves that internal uh, internal colonial is very much labor-focused. Absolutely. You know, um, let me hear from D. Webb on this one. Hey, um, you know what? It kind of reminds me of anybody that been any kind of uh, boot camp. That's a tactic that's that's used as well, where it's you punish the larger group for what one person has did with to the point where that one person is scared to go against the grain, not because of so much what they may face as punishment, but because they're going to face harsher punishment from their, their peer group. Right. So that's not an uncommon tactic that's that's used actually. Like that's used in all walks of life. I know people have been to prison boot camp, I know people have been to military boot camp, and that's a tactic that's used, you know what I'm saying? But I, I think you know, I, I kind of feel like we rehashing this prison. I think the biggest thing takeaway from this is stay the fuck out of prison, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? I understand the situations where you know, where you may be in a situation where you got to do something. It's people that's been framed. It's free people that's been in a situation where they're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, but I think the greater percentage of people is people that fucking did some dumb shit with the fucking prison. Stay out of prison. You're not going to be treated like a human being. I don't know why people suspect prison to be a summer camp, dog. Like, it's right there. At this point, if you don't know what's going on with the 13th Amendment, I don't know what to say to you, bro. Stay out of prison, bro. Do what you got to do to keep the, the young men in your bloodline out of prison. You feel me? Because it's not summer camp. You know what I'm saying? Just like it's terrible what we hear about the slavery out here in the fields and this, he's picking cotton, you know, which which my grand, grandma and grandfather had to pick cotton as 12 and 10 year olds. I was raised my grandparents. So to me, the story wasn't as moving as, as most people would because I've heard this all my life. You feel me? I heard about them killing chickens, having to kill chickens by hand and having to pick cotton. And, you know, what I mean, my grandfather working the working the, the, the uh, tractor at, at 10 years. So I, these are things I've heard before. You feel me? But the bigger thing is, yo, if you go to prison, you will be treated less than a human being and even lesser if you black. So stay the fuck out of prison, dog. And we need to do what we got to do to keep young black men out of prison. You feel me? 
that, that we can't keep out of prison. That's why that other prompt, this comes full circle with that other prompt. When we talking about these brothers on the corner and all, if you're going to save them, get them young, bro. If we're going to do something, just, just mentor one young kid, man, outside of maybe your family, or even in your bloodline, and, and, and keep them out of prison. Keep them out of the system, because once you're in the system, it's over with. Yo, you're going to experience this type of stuff. It's not going to be a, a, a cakewalk. It's going to suck, bro. They're going to make you do dumb shit, pick cotton. Like you said, they don't even need the cotton. They don't even need the cotton. It's not like it's an industry that they making buku profits off this. This is just a punishment, yo. So do what you got to do, man, as a, as, a, as a people. as We got to come together, man, and keep young men out of prison, yo. We got to stop fighting this battle. You know, where we have to tell these stories, where they have a, a, a prison industrial complex to put us in, yo. Yo, we got to stop. We got to empower each other, bro, economically. We got to do something. To, to stop this circle, you know what I'm saying? To stop this path. So my biggest takeaway, stay the fuck out of prison, bro. You know what I'm saying? Stay out of that. Stay out of that system. It's, it's a trap, yo. That's all I got. No, I appreciate that, Web. I, I agree with you a thousand percent there as well. Azuli is out there in the chat. He says, wow, we're fucked. But Azuli, I'm glad you, you, you're there. Uh, I wasn't sure you was out there tonight. But this is why filmmakers like yourself, these are the stories you got to tell. If you're gonna if you're gonna tell, you know, if you're gonna tell stories that relate to the to the current condition, as opposed to those antebellum stories, and again, antebellum stories are fine, but I, me personally, I'm kind of over that. Let's talk about this shit here, and, and and let's have the message be what Bakari said or what Webb just said. Like, stay out of this shit by any means necessary. We got to figure out, like, what's the, the school to prison pipeline starts in, what, grade three? That means we got to get to these kids before they hit grade three if we're going to do any work. This idea that you're going to walk out on the corner with guys with carbines and all kind of shit in their hands on a corner, and you're going to convert them, I don't think that's feasible. You're going to get more of yourselves killed doing that. Try to get out here and try to get these these young kids, you know. And and I was thinking about this this week. This is why I don't give women a pass. You know, women too can be organizers of of you know family constructs and education and how to deal with the youth before they get to that age where they don't listen to them anymore. Where you could put a certain sense of respect in them where when your mama tell you something you're gonna do it or if she tells you to avoid something you're going to avoid it you know this is the kind of stuff we got to get to man we got to get to that like yesterday you know only what say you to this yeah i kind of feel like all the prompts relate to each other you know uh maybe yes, not the yes. nick fuentes one but um maybe i don't know but um but all of them kind of relate to each other you know we had the brother explaining 13th amendment and this brother was showing us what it looked like or what it feel like um you know and obviously there was the kids standing on the corner who if they don't get killed or if they kill somebody and they don't get the death penalty well no even if they do get the death penalty they probably gonna end up in prison and they're gonna be talking about oh i was enslaved and it's like you know because i don't know actually i didn't catch it i don't know if the guy it sounded like the guy was a member of a gang um uh i don't know or maybe his name just you know relates to a certain gang but uh but like yeah this is this is what happens and and the, and the only question is you know it's kind of like what d Webb was saying is that why why did you think that white that after you go murder three people right that this white man is just going to send you disneyland you know like like why do you think that's what will be the end of you murdering three people Okay, or, or 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 like he was saying about the mass murderers, like you a mass murderer, you on the list, and then after all that, they finally find you, and they're just gonna say, okay, now that we found you, here's a ticket to Disneyland. No, they're gonna treat you like shit because there's a lot of there's a lot of white people. I want black people to understand this, even if it's not every white person, there are a lot of white people who do not like you. There are, you know how there's some black people who are obsessed with white folk? The thing about white folk is that sometimes I'll I be logging onto Twitter or social media and I'll be like, damn, yo, y'all be got the white man on your mind all day. Like, y'all just wake up 
think about what this white man's doing and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, damn, I'm sure I know the white man not thinking about y'all like that. But the thing is, there is white people who are thinking about black folk like that. So I'd be like, yo, they've got this, like, a, like black people in America, white people in America got this weird love-hate relationship. I'm glad I'm not a part of it, real talk, right? I mean, obviously, I get into the, you know, the, the, the banter, you know, just like everybody else. But what I'm saying is that I'm not a part of it in the sense of, uh, you know, like, 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 I'm not, you know, I'm not with it. That said, though, right? Uh, you, like, 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 yeah, you, you just gotta not go to prison. That's why I tell black folk, you should leave because there's this skit, like I said, I'm not really the biggest Amos Wilson fan, obviously, but still, there's a skit Amos Wilson talks about where he's like, someday black folk gonna be talking about, oh, I'm from Egypt. Oh, I, I built the pyramids, you know? And then the white man would be saying, great, 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 just keep going into this into this uh, gas chamber. You know, great, 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 just keep picking that cotton. And, and, and so all I would say is that, you know, to break a person in six days, what? and, and it's not even... And it's not and listen, the, and this is the, the, the big takeaway. Whatever they did to this man is not comparable to what they did to the ancestors of 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 you know, let's say African Americans or you know, any any people really in the diaspora. There's nothing compared to just oh, he, he got put in a, a hot box one day and all of a sudden he's the best damn cotton picker. You know? Meanwhile, like D Weber said, they was they, they had black folk picking kind of 12 and shit. Okay, they had black folk. They they were breaking people's legs for for for, for thinking of running away, and they had guns too, right? Uh, they were breaking people's legs. They were putting people putting weights on people so that their back would break, you know, because they had their legs on their on their arms, legs on their like like they were just torturing humans, and they put this guy in one piece of you know one piece of metal, and sure it's hot day, whatever. Put in one thing. And all of a sudden he's 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 broken. He ain't he ain't trying to fight, he ain't trying to look, he ain't trying to investigate, he ain't trying to team up, he ain't trying to do nothing. He ain't trying to do nothing but uh but but be a good slave. And 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 this is the this is the guy who would kill you in a heartbeat. This is one of them the quote unquote mass murderers. You know? Tattoos under his eyes. Kill you in a heartbeat, but this white boy could convert him like that. And that's why that's another thing to just take away it's real real quick, real quick. Six days to turn to transform somebody into a, 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 a good worker. And this is why the white boy, you know, when Machiavelli asks, hey, do you do you do you seek love or do you seek fear? You know? And, and this is why the white boy is telling you about power. You know, we don't we don't pay attention to this white boy. This white boy is saying, look, I don't give a shit what what kind of black person you think you are. You give me a week and everything that this black person thought. He knew every every sort of dignity that he thought he had, everything that he had in a week, in one little hot box. He got you uh, turned into the best dad worker uh, in your life. And that, that should tell us something. And I'm not saying, you know, go out and be fair, you know, invoke fear in people, but that should tell you something. With that, I'm going to say, uh, you know, appreciation and all that. Yeah, I appreciate your take as well. Yeah, uh Six days in the hot box and on seven day, this white man rested, man. He did his job. This guy tells you he became the best cotton picking Negro in there. Huh. Huh. Ah. Uh, anyway, uh Buana, it's on you. Quickly, and this is gonna be brief because I know we run out over time. Um First, let me say, let me say that uh, Erzuli, someone did make a film similar to this um, called uh, Antebellum. The movie is called Antebellum. Um, the star of the movie was Janelle Monae, you know, um, and it was it wasn't exactly the prison system, but similar to this kind of movie. So they beat you to the punch, Erzuli, if you was planning on doing something like this. Um, secondly, you know, I, I'm going to just end with this one. Um uh, me and well, Brother Bakari is we are trying, he's trying to uh, wage an economic war against a grocery store in New Rochelle in New York City. The name of the, the grocery store is New Rochelle Farms. I, I don't know if he had an opportunity to speak on it. So, and, and I know the time is very late. So, that's something that we are looking at doing. Um, and anyone who want to know more about it, he's probably going to talk about it more tomorrow. But we, we really just trying to wage an economic war against that store. 
and stop uh, having black people and spending spending their money there. So I just really wanted to put that out there since he didn't have an opportunity to talk on it. So that's that's about it. I'm, I, I appreciate y'all brothers giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Coco, I appreciate you. You know I do. And I'll, I'll just end it there. Yeah, for sure. Bakari's, Bakari's still here. He could talk about it. Uh, we could end this at, in about six minutes. So, Bakari, go ahead and talk about that thing. Uh, but, but, but before you talk about it, the problem with the antebellum movie, or Zuli in the chat is saying that movie was trash, is because the problem with it is, again, it's showing this antebellum slavery. What I'm saying is we need to put the images out there. If we want to try to wake up more people, in fact, use fair tactics, with our youth, like, yo, show them this shit that he is describing, give them a story with that. And so and so guys, you know, like a horror story type thing, and kind of dissuade people from going into this stuff. Um, Bakar, you want to talk about that thing real quick? Yeah, uh, at New Rochelle Farms, that's the name of the grocery store in New Rochelle, New York. Uh, what is his name? Jarrell Harris, I think. Well, anyway, 37-year-old brother. Walked in the store, he ate some bananas. He ate some bananas and he ate a banana and some grapes, didn't pay. He left out of the store without paying and they called the police on him. And the police killed him. And the police killed him. According to the people there, they say it's a tight knit community. I guess where everybody know everybody i guess from the way they were speaking and the police killed the brother the police said he uh initially they said he had a gun during the uh that's what they screamed on camera when they did the uh the body cam he got a gun he got a gun he got a gun but during the investigation when they were being they were starting to being investigated and they was asked the answer that they gave was the answer that they gave was he is reaching well he didn't but they say he didn't have a gun he reached for their gun but the biggest thing the reason i say we need to stop going to these people inside of letting anybody just come up and i looked at new rochelle is it really our community but still giving these people our money supposed to be a tight-knit community they know the relationship, don't care who it is in this country, they know the relationship with black people and the police. And we know whenever you call the police on a black person, uh, it could be a death sentence. Come to find out, yeah, he was schizophrenic. His family say he was probably going through one of his episodes. But if it's that tight knit of a community and he ate, stayed in your store, he ate the grapes and banana in your store and you call the cops on him so and they say the community is in and out of that store that's what the people were saying so i just think black people should stop going to that store there's no black and brown unity and by the way these are latinos that's on this grocery store uh so i think but not just them i've been saying we need to stop shopping with everybody in our community if they're not us they coming in and not respecting you they taking our resources and to build themselves up and we constantly give it to them and i think that is just something for me that is something i've been doing and i've been trying to push the message and now i hope people in new york can hear this and let's go stand and say no we're not shopping in this grocery store in a new called new rochelle farms uh i can give the address right quick give me a second uh and, and, and I, I, that's me. I think that's what we should be doing uh, right now. That's what we need to start doing anyway. We should have been doing it. I don't ask for a boycott, even though I know how some people use that word. But me, when I see a boycott, is we're asking people to treat us better. Uh, when you treat us better, we'll come back to your store and give you our money. I'm asking us to shut them down. And see if we can somehow start controlling. I know we can, so we can figure out how we're gonna control our communities and have some of these businesses become community-owned businesses. The people who can't afford we come together, and that's what I'm asking for. And the address to this store is 465 North Avenue, New Rochelle, New York. I think I'm gonna put it in uh I'm gonna put the address to it in uh 
in the chat right now. But on that, peace. Thank you for letting me speak. Bakari, before you go, uh, you want to shout anything out this week? No, I don't want to shout anything out this week. I can just say I'm glad, you know, uh, you know, to be on here with everybody. Uh, I want. I, I'm glad when, when D Web get a chance to come through because I'm think I'm gonna do that more on more Fridays. Come through and we can have some good conversation, have some uh, fun uh, on a uh, on them Friday. My late night, my late night smoke, late night smoke. Come blaze with me. Uh, I think that was because it was excellent last night. I want to yeah, see so more cool. of us, more of us together. You know, because 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 we're about the same thing. It's going to be disagreements, and it's okay for us to have disagreements on certain things. But as long as we want to work toward the main thing, and the main thing we all want to see us do better. We all want to see our future, which is our children. We all want to see them do better. Oh, I will be doing a show tomorrow. <laughs> Mind our black business. Appreciate that, Bakari. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll tune in tomorrow for sure. Um. Uh, real black gentleman, you want to shout anything out this week? Uh, no, nah, not really. I just um, just uh, thank you for you know what I'm saying, the opportunity to speak. You know what I'm saying? Is is, is um, I'm glad you know what I'm saying. I was able to you know what I'm saying, speak my piece about some things. Um, and I just hope everyone you know what I'm saying, have a great evening. All right, thank you for that. D Web, you want to shout anything out? Talk about hip hop, high society, anything like that. Sure, sure. Shout out to Brother Bakari, man. I'm gonna try to come through, brother. Um, some of some is rough for me, man. I have like all the keys, <laughs> this shit, man. But I just put my uh, oldest on the plane to Chicago. She goes to her grandma and she's going back for something. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to my um the swing of things, man. Once again, I've been trying to um like you hit on earlier, relaunch this hip hop thing while I'm trying to keep it, of course, very positive. Um. You know, I, I tagged you in that one post with that sister spitting, spitting hot fire. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to relaunch that with five other people, some of which I aren't really familiar with a lot of um, the social media stuff. stuff. So I'm like training people behind the scenes and trying to help them do that. But once I get that rolling, um, I'm going to that's going to be more of a hands off thing for me. So I'll be get back to swing of things. Uh, we're going to relaunch. Um, Oh, well, we come back new season, I should say, of uh, the Harsh Reality Podcast. It's either going to be the thirtieth, I want to say, is that Sunday, or it's going to be the the next Sunday after the the the, 8th, the 13th of August. Either or, I'm gonna let you know in a minute, Goku. I just confirmed at least one new panel member. We're unfortunately we're losing L. He's going overseas to the UK, man. But you know, he'll pop in every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? Gonna miss that brother, but. We got some surprises, man. We got some people that you, you may or may not have heard of adding to the panel. So, um, and, and a couple changes to things with the show. So I'm happy to announce that. And it's, it's, as always, man, it's been great to build with you brothers, man. Y'all always good. Man, I agree on everything, but it's great to have the conversation. Um, the think tank, man, I, I consider this like a think tank to me, man. It's, it's great ideas being bounced back and forth and very positive vibe. So, man, shout out to you for, for hosting this, uh, Goku, bro. And shout out to all you brothers on the panel. Shout out to all you people out there in the chat. Yeah, thank you. For hey, let me say this. Let me say this right quick. Hey, D-Web, when you start doing your hip hop thing again, I'm going to see if I can get some of them youth. I'm going to get my son and some of his friends so they can come through and check some of the hip hop thing you be talking with what you be talking about. So they can understand some positive hip hop as well. I know they do. I know my son, they do, but I know what they still listen to. So they can understand that it's different sides to this thing that need to be played. Yeah, because we need more youth to hear someone talking positive and showing some positive about the hip hop if that's your thing. So that's what sure. I'm gonna do. Every, every every time you put it up saying that's your show, I'm gonna be shooting it out. I'm gonna be shooting it out to the youth 18, 17 to 25 years old. Hopefully they come through and check it out. Oh, real quick, man. I'm focused on independent artists too. So if you know some of them brothers out there, man, that grinding because you know they don't they don't get enough shine on that. So that's my focus is the people who are out here trying to do positive stuff and may not have that that platform of the views. I, that's why I really want to focus on do interviews and stuff. So if you know somebody, man, shoot them my way, man. Shoot them my information. I'll shoot you my information so you can give it to them. All right. I sure will. All right. Well, I don't know if you caught that MCE um interview i did a couple weeks ago like two weeks ago but if you haven't check it out and let me know if that's your cup of tea as well uh and you know per perhaps we could collaborate on some stuff in the future too with the website because uh, I, I i've been interested in doing like an independent 
top 10, top 20 lists on a regular, because, you know, as you know, I'm into music as well. So uh, let's talk about it later on. Uh, thanks, Webb. Uh, Oni, what do you want to shout out this week? Hey, not just shouting out nothing. Just, just Mama Africa, you know? Uh, that's, that's just the best place for me at this point. But that's about it. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, I'll do my thing tomorrow, but... Um, oh, I, I got this computer. Ugh, it's fucking... This mic is just a uh, trouble. All right, but that's about it. That's it. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for coming through and, and hanging around with us. Uh, Buana, last but not least, Buana, what do you want to shout out this week? Nada. I, I just want to shout out again. I want to reiterate and keep knocking the economic war that B- Brother Bakari is raging. And, and we with him. We riding with him on that. And um, my brother Harsh Reality and his hip-hop program and what he's going to try to do eventually in the future to all my sisters out there who listen in quietly, you know, we miss you all and we hope you all come back very, very soon. I'll just end it there and I appreciate the show. All right. I appreciate all of you. Without y'all, this show would be about 15 minutes. <laughs> it was just me. Uh, so I appreciate all of you. Uh, we don't have to agree. In fact, that's not the point of the show. The show is not to be a sounding board or echo chamber or what have you. Is where we discuss some things, open our minds to a few other things, and express ourselves, etc. Afro Native World asks, what, kind, what genre of music do you make? You know, one day I'm going to share some of my music with you guys. One day I'll share some of it. So, so, if it's, if, so Coco, if the music is whack, we can tell you, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was hot garbage. <laughs> you didn't get upset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not uh, if when. <laughs> uh, the intro music to this show is actually a, a song from a, from a group I used to have that I uh, I sampled it and put it to a, to a different uh, beat. But uh, so th- that could give you an idea of what I can do. But um, uh, with that said, I'll be back next week. Trigger Happy Two Six Two says, "Great show, very related and integrated topics too." Yes, very much so. This was a good night. Uh, we'll be back next week to do it again. Uh, you might see me during the week. Uh, I've been meaning to do some interviews with some people. Uh, Webb just put me on, as you mentioned, to someone. So let's see if that can happen soon. Um, Afro Native World, I, I would say, you know, that's a good question. Buona, what say you? You, you think we like... I, that, I that's a very that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Ah, it depends on who you ask. We yeah. big reggae lovers. We big soca lovers. It just depends on who you ask. That's what I would say. And a certain seasons kind of too with music with us too. Um, you know. Uh, anyway, see you guys next week. Check out all the other shows on KWAZ uh, Radio. Brother Bakari is gonna be playing some blues tomorrow. Blues is my favorite music actually. Blues I tell I, I tell Brother Bakari that blues is big in the Bahamas. You know, we know we know about blues. You know, we know about the blues music. music. Yeah, yeah, we know we know about that for sure. Uh so yeah, so uh you guys will see me soon and you can check out everyone else in the meantime. Until next week, you guys be good. Take care. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast with your host, Koku. If you like what you just heard, we hope you pass along our web address, bittermedicineblogs.com, to your friends and colleagues, and share our show to all your social media. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been a KWAZ radio production. Join us next time for another session of the Bitter Medicine Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at Bitter Medicine Show, Twitter, Bitter Meds, Tumblr, Bitter Meds, Instagram, Bitter Medicine.